Cooking is a life skill. For me, it's fundamentally important. It's just as crucial as keeping fit because Latin, history, geography, no disrespect, but if you're not going to teach that for the rest of your life, it doesn't come into play. Cooking does. Three times a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life, you need to eat. So we don't cook three meals a day, but there's one meal across that day that needs to be absolutely you, you know, on a plate, done properly, healthily cooked, and sets you up, because you are what you eat. So we can never underestimate the importance of food, because that's the fuel, and especially in sports. Now, when we look at the average salary for a standard chef, it is currently around £26,000 in the UK, which is not something that will make you get up out your seat. But if we compare that to Gordon Ramsay's salary of around £45 million, then I'm sure you will think twice and start looking to apply to your nearest culinary school. Now, as much as Gordon is a world-class chef, he's also more of an entrepreneur than anything. I mean, with 15 restaurants in London alone and seven Michelin stars across the whole globe, this gives him the status of being one of the richest chefs the world has ever seen. Not to mention the countless number of TV shows he has produced under his belt that continue to attract millions of viewers daily across his various social media channels. He has an approximate net worth of around $220 million. And in this video, what I'm going to be covering is the strategy that he used to help build this global empire. And how you can use his ways of thinking to implement into your life, into your business, and in yourself. This is Aaron, this is the Golden Knowledge, and this is how Gordon Ramsay was able to build a $220 million empire. So how can you think like Gordon Ramsay? How was he able to build his $200 million empire? Well, one of the key strategies that he used was the 30th law of power. Make your accomplishments seem effortless. Your actions must seem natural and executed with ease. All the effort and practice that goes into your craft must be concealed. When you act, act effortlessly, as if you could do much more. Avoid the temptation of revealing how hard you work. It only raises questions. Teach no one your tricks or they will be used against you. And this is the strategy that Gordon practices to the T. Work 14, 15 hours a day to perfect an absolute stunning dish. It disappears in two and a half minutes. And that's what I said, it loses you. you. You get on that journey and nothing else matters except what you put on the plate. Because you start off with this raw ingredient and you go through that journey. 60 minutes later, you've got this, this bit of magic. Also, it's an incredible passion. Gordon Ramsay is seen as one of the most prestigious chefs in the world. Reason being is because the man is everywhere. I mean, he's on countless TV shows, he's plastered all over YouTube, and he's even a living meme on social media. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay. But as we go deeper into the content he produces, we realize that the man is an absolute genius when it comes to food. The chef seems to be able to create spectacular food so gracefully and naturally. And all in all, it seems effortless to him. This principle also transitions over to running a restaurant. I mean, we see in countless episodes of Kitchen Nightmares how Gordon 
is able to take a rundown shithole of a restaurant and turn it completely around into a success. This is what gives Gordon this godlike presence when it comes to food and running a restaurant. If you stay focused and master those dishes, you'll get there. I promise you, I will. I promise you. Chef Ramsey came here and I had the intentions that he was going to help put this place back on track. I think he did more than what I expected. I think he ignited my passion in the kitchen again, put me closer with my brother. This is what we needed. And look after each other. Good night. Now, you may be thinking, why does Gordon spend more time producing TV shows and content then cooking in his actual restaurants? Well, it's all because of this system here. The more people he can expose his cooking skills and restaurant knowledge to, the more people will be interested to dine in his £125 per head restaurants. And the more people that dine in his restaurants, the more money he makes and this whole cycle and strategy is what he has built his whole business on. The content he produces and his personal branding is so strong that he could just slap his name on a restaurant and loads of people will rush to it because it's a Gordon Ramsay restaurant. But the thing is, even though Gordon seems to have this natural genius approach to food it wasn't something he was born with as a boy i dreamt of playing professional football for my favorite local team glasgow rangers i got released on the back of an injury um smashed my cartilage and then they said they'd keep an eye on me but that's just a polite fuck off really that's all any form of pain that i experienced here was eradicated when i won my third michigan star and had i not had the upset in football here with Ibrox, I don't think I'd be the chef I am today. Gordon actually started out as having dreams of being a football player. But after an injury prevented him from going any further, he then decided to join culinary school. This was where the start of Gordon's journey into the world of cooking began. And this journey led him to eventually be taken under the wing of three-star Michelin chef Marco Pierre White, who is infamously known to be the only person to make Gordon Ramsay cry. Did I shout? Yes. Did I scream? At times. Service is service. And in service, chefs shout. This is Gordon. He remains the only human being, as far as I'm aware, who's ever made Gordon Ramsay cry. No, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. Gordon's whole natural approach and genius knowledge of food goes back to him being mentored by many hardcore chefs. And after nearly three whole years of working for Marco Pierre White, Ramsey decided that he wanted to leave as he was tired of the constant rages, bullying and violence in Marco's notorious kitchen, Battlefield. He then worked at Gavroche restaurant in Mayfair, Hotel Diva in the French Alps, and under Guy Savoy and Joel Rubichon. Until he turned down the pace slightly and worked as a personal chef on a yacht based in Bermuda. But this hardcore and tough mentorship that he went through and taking out years of his life to study and practice culinary and food is what made Gordon into the person he is today. Food was my calling, I think, because that was the way I could sort of disappear. Disappear, travel, learn, and get really excited about something. And my first dream was to go to France to understand why were they the sort of foundation of cooking? Why did they start it? How did they start it? And I, I disappeared. I, I became French, and within 18 months, I was fluent in the language, I was holding my own in a foreign kitchen, and uh, I, I was seriously cooking my ass off. To become a person of power, 
you must research and practice endlessly before ever appearing in public or on stage. But by keeping your effort and your study to yourself, you seem to have this grace and power of God. Picture it like a racehorse. From up close, we would see the strain, the effort to control the horse and the painful breathing. But from the distance where we sit and watch, it is all gracefulness, simply flying through the air. By keeping others at a distance from seeing your hard work, then they will only see the ease with which you move. All we see as a viewer, or a customer in Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, is the awe-inspiring dish that tantalizes our palate, and service that we find phenomenal. But what we don't see is the years and years of mentorship and practice that Gordon has put into studying and educating himself on what makes a good restaurant. This concealment, however, of all the thousands of hours that Ramsey has put into learning his craft is one of the biggest reasons why he has been able to achieve the things that he has achieved. It's what gives him the public image of a natural born genius chef and simply why we all love him. This branding and public image of Gordon Ramsay is what commands the expensive price tag that comes with dining out in one of his restaurants and is what contributes to Gordon's 200 million dollar empire. Don't take a job for the sake of money. Don't worry about earning 500 pound a month or a year more somewhere else. Go and get knowledge, because that becomes a bigger passport for everything. The money will come once you've mastered your craft and you become incredibly talented. So what the point is, is to simply take the time out to study your topic of expertise really get deep into the topic, get mentorships, and be willing to sacrifice a certain amount of time of your life to dedicate to your craft. But don't shout from the rooftops about it. Once you've studied your area of expertise, prove your expertise through action, not by screaming how much hard work you put in. We see this with Gordon all the time, whether that's cooking a banging meal or propelling a failed restaurant to success. He doesn't boast about the hard work he's put in or he doesn't boast about his expertise. He proves his expertise through his actions. The hard work and grind is for you to do. The world doesn't need to know that. We don't respect the athlete that puts in the work when everyone's watching. We respect the athlete that puts the work in behind closed doors, where no one else is watching. And then when it comes down to it, they prove themselves on the field. Exactly like Gordon. And that's how Gordon Ramsay built a $220 million global empire. And that's what you as an entrepreneur or a corporate worker can also learn from him to make your accomplishments seem effortless. And I suppose more than anything, I don't, I don't think I've peaked yet. That's a weird thing about it. I don't, I don't, I don't feel I've, I've given everything I've got in food. Even before I started working on television, you know, I'd mastered my craft. You know, I spent three years getting my ass kicked in France, and then literally eight years, ten years, like reading medicine, studying under some great chefs to really perfect my trade. So then, when I got a chance to sort of do my profession on television, it was Kitchen Nightmares that really started first. So that was real because I, I wanted these businesses to, to work.
Now, if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and leave a comment below on what your thoughts and feelings are about Gordon Ramsay. And if you are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. And to all our loyal subscribers, we are glad you are here. We do some of the best character breakdowns on the whole of YouTube and we aim to produce at least one high quality animated video per week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any golden knowledge. I'll see you soon.